like one of the articles I wrote and I published on LinkedIn, I got somebody from Brazil comment on it and saying mm -hmm. the same stuff's happening in Brazil. And mm -hmm. you asked me the direct question. And honestly, the, the thing that excites me most about it's the bookkeeping, man. It's the accounting. It's the yeah. opportunity to restart the entire game of what the accounting industry has been built on. And it's the debits and credits and general ledger maintenance and chart of account organization. And it's called bookkeeping, accounting, whatever you want to call it. Bookkeeping is what we call it today. Hey guys, welcome to CPA Primetime. Today we brought on Jay Mack out of New York back again to talk 2019, the future of accounting and what you need to know if you feel stuck inside a firm. I want to know from you, we're going into, you know, 2019 here, middle of December. What do you see in the accounting market? Okay. That's very, very promising. And what do you see that's going to change for the better? I think because we all know there's so many problems in the industry, right? But from you and from what you're seeing and from what you realize, and by the way, guys, I brought him on the show because I'm, I'm looking at the way he's moving. I'm looking at what he's putting out. He's not a client of mine. He could be possibly, but just the way he's moving, I resonate with it a lot. And so do a lot of other people that are looking at his videos, watching his stuff, watching his Instagram stories, that type of thing. They're just like, man, Justin gets it. So I want to know on this show going into 2019, what do you think about the, what's going to happen with the good part of the industry? And then from the bad part, like, I don't really need you to tell us what's bad, right? But I need you to tell us, um, is, are those bad things going to change? Okay. So you have the floor. I certainly thank you for all those kind words, first of all, because that was very nice of you to say, and, and that's why we do all of this stuff, right? I mean, look, everyone's going to hate it. People are going to love it. You just do it because you want to make a few people happy, even if a few people don't like it, and that's, that's fine. So to hear the, the nice stuff, it, it keeps you motivated to do more. So thank you for that. Um, first thing that excites me is I just want to talk about that first because I, the social media stuff, honestly, like I don't want to get technical. I want to talk about the bookkeeping. Like, honestly, like if you, you know, you want to be an entrepreneur, go for it. I mean, I've, we've talked about that stuff, but the social media is really cool. Like I've really just been learning a lot about it over the last few months. And I know people follow me, CPA J Mac on Instagram. And I appreciate that. Um, and I know people love a lot of the stuff I'm doing and I know people have questions and I'm just trying to do a whole lot of thing about myself and accounting and tax stuff because something else you and I agree on as well wholeheartedly in our lockstep on is giving away free stuff and giving away all of this stuff for free. And I'm trying to put it out in consumable bite sized little digestible pieces that people can, uh, you know, consume mm -hmm. sidebar guys on stories, hold the screen. And you can read the whole thing. Like yeah. <laughs> anyone that's doing the stories that like knows the stories, like people that are putting out really good stories, they have things to read. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not a test to see if you can read super fast. Like just yeah, hold the, yeah. <laughs> just hold the screen and you can read it and you can go back and forth too, in case you go forward. Anyway. Um, so I've connected with a really awesome crew of accounting professionals throughout the entire world, just through social media, mm -hmm. specifically Instagram, um, with, with getting, you know, and, and getting really eyeballs through in, uh, LinkedIn and, uh, and Facebook as well. So I think that's super exciting. I see a lot of people out there hitting it hard and some people are doing a great job and some people are doing their best. And, um, I know my best is going to be way better than all of that. And I just need to continue to do it and, you know, fuck it, man. I'm going to say it cause I'm, yeah. you know, true. And, and I'm watching what's out there and, it's my personality. Like you're get, you see what I am. Like I'm no different. Like I'm the same guy out and I'm the same guy here. And my kids are here and it's all the same stuff. And I see opportunities for guys like me mm -hmm. and gals like me, people with that, like, cause we do something very intimate with, with people and it's their money. And mm -hmm. you know, I say this all the time. I mean, doctors are extremely intimate too. And there's two guarantees in life, death and taxes. And, I don't have a fountain of youth and I'm certainly no medical doctor to be able to give you any kind of longevity in life. However, mm -hmm. I am a CPA and I know my shit about accounting and taxes and I can certainly help you there. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but also with that being said, like there's got to be an intimate personal relationship, even if it's one time a year. Like mm-hmm. Gary D talks about this all the time. Empathize. Mm-hmm. Empathy. Right? Like mm-hmm. this is their money. This is their life. This is what people do five days, 40 hours a week, five days a week, vacations. Are, and this is what they do. And you should care a lot yeah. more than I think a lot of them do. Um, so um, with yeah. social media, like I'll give a shout out to Dominique, right? Dominique, uh, T-Bay Financial, and, uh, yeah. right? She's the yeah. perfect example. Perfect example. Her Instagram is specifically for her people and her clients. And the and yeah, she's giving out the stuff, man. Awesome. Beautiful. It's perfect, and it's and it's her, right? And 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 it's giving her an opportunity mm-hmm. to connect with her clients, mm-hmm. and she's going to be able to make her business whatever she wants it to be, as big or small, whatever it is, right? Like her and I have mm-hmm. different goals on social, right? Like That's I'm cool. looking for the views, I'm looking for the attention, I want people to engage. You know, you mm-hmm. want to get brands' attention, and you want to be able to monetize. Mm-hmm. She's doing it solely for her clients, right? Right. right. Like, I mean, it's awesome. I'm doing it too, but I'm doing it in a much different way and her goals are completely different. And I think with this social media untapped market, right, with accounting, which is, I don't even think any of us know what's going to really work. Like, I mean, I don't know. Like, there's nobody with a million followers of accounting and find me that, whoever hits a million followers first, okay, then we can talk and we can kind of like discuss that. Right, right. Um, But, um, but, uh, you know, I, I think people then can build their own personal brands and you can just mm-hmm. do a little tax shop on your, on your, in your house and, and you can just talk to your customers through Instagram and Facebook and stuff. And I think that's really exciting and that could be a huge opportunity for a lot of people. Starting now, just record everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you it. have my approval, Juan Garcia of Gold Lake Media, that anytime you are talking or discussing or viewing or tech, you can use my shit anytime you want, all right? You- Let's do it. All right. So anyway, point being is that you could have recorded it in the beginning. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Go ahead. Let's do it. Let's catch the content. No, my office in the future, it's going to be crazy. Like you're going to see me, you're going to have, I'm going to have a little camera person just like Gary Vee. Like, well, the whole office dynamic is going to be different, right? Because we go, go to the office to work. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we've always done. Now, you don't necessarily have to go to the office to work. Now, there are some professions where that is completely impossible, which I understand. Mm-hmm. Technology advances them in other ways. But in terms of a service provider, mm-hmm. how often do you need to be in an office? I mean, even if you're marketing or if you're selling accounting services or you're doing mm-hmm. accounting, you can be mm-hmm. at home to do that. So yeah. I'm not saying that the office doesn't exist because you still have to have the office. You need to have that teamwork and camaraderie. And, and to be honest with you, that's kind of what I missed the most about being on my own. I don't even ask me that. It was just something I thought of. Like, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of sucks not having that camaraderie. I'm not going to lie. Like, and, and I would look forward to that in the future mm-hmm. to have some kind of like shared office space for accountants and CPAs, even if it's my own team. It's CPA Enterprises, you know, um, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't require daily it, like, it wouldn't even be a requirement at all. Like you, I would want you to come cause you want to come, you know, like you wouldn't really mm-hmm. be required to. And it's not like I'm going to bribe you with foosball and, and, and snacks, but in the same sense, like you would want to come to work kind of thing. Right. So right, I right. see opportunities there to change the whole dynamic. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, and yeah. others do too. You're, you know, you're not alone. In fact, one of my clients sees the exact same thing. Like he's going to have it set up to where he's going to have his people in the office, except if there's a stay at home mom, who then also has a CPA and is also good and can also generate an incredible amount of revenue, talent, whatever it is, value for the firm. And they know what they're doing and they're also trustworthy, right? And they have the communication down Then they can stay at home and actually be a part of one of my clients firms that he's going to be building in the future. In fact, like he, he <laughs> you raise your eyebrows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? So this is going to be a cool little segue. They're That's about you. to call it. They're rolling yeah. in two seconds. Yeah. And, yeah. and when they're rolling in, what my client wants to do, just like you, is he wants to run the entire thing from his phone, which like 50 plus year olds that are not forward thinking might like be like, no, you're going to fail. But not if you do it right. That's a thing. So, yeah, I, I, think, I think a lot of things we're talking about, they'll get there, which is the point of this episode. Okay. So. I'm, you hear my kids? I do. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. No, I love it. I, well, tying in, like, that's kind of cool, right? Because we are talking about working from home and having that exactly. opportunity. And this is what I do. And I've said this to you before. Maybe we haven't said this, like, you know, on air or being recorded. But mm -hmm. I know I've said it to you. Like, that's kind of part of my thing as well is to give yeah. – anybody the opportunity to try this out even if it's just servicing your own local community to do their tax returns mm -hmm. but if you're looking for a career opportunity you can learn to do bookkeeping and debits and credits it's really not that hard to do you know but then throughout that you can learn more business stuff right you can be involved with business you learn to do debits and credits you really like it well i mean look and just the sidebar like the bookkeepers today they're on accountants. They don't even have college educations. Like they don't even have degrees. They're just doing bookkeeping and charging a hundred dollars an hour. You can yeah. learn how to do it. And then if you like it, you can, I don't know, maybe go to school for it. Maybe I'll pay for it, you mm -hmm. know? And, and if you're really driving and then I'll invest in your education and then maybe you can go on to do something more. You want your CPA license. Okay. You want to work with me forever. That's great. You want to go work at one of the big four or maybe the big 10. Mm -hmm. In ten years, but anyway, that's a different story. Yeah, because um, I think they're all going to merge. Just saying that now, right. I think they're all going to merge. I think everybody's going to merge, and there's going to be some fucking huge merger, and we'll see. But my point uh, is this: uh, Yeah, um, I can put them in those places because we have a network, right? You and I know each other. We know each other. Like we all have networks, and I can give those employees an opportunity to then further their lives, and then maybe they stay with yeah. me forever, or maybe they go become a CFO of a Fortune 500 company, and they remember working at CPA Enterprises, where they didn't have a pot to piss in, and they just learned to do some bookkeeping from home, and started making some good money, and they made something <laughs> out of their lives. Mm -hmm. They're gonna thank me for that? That's, if I do yeah. that for one person, that's friggin' awesome. There, there's so many opportunities that aren't mm -hmm. uh, talked about at all, especially to the youth who, is looking at the accounting industry and getting into it and then looking into get getting the CPA, but they're being told, well, big four is the best thing ever. Right. Um, even when I was I up, like, I, I mean, I, I'm grateful for like the opportunities and the situations that PwC put me into. It could have been much more regular than it was. It was crazy. Like a movie, some of the opportunities, but then again, I would have been, I think, in a better spot helping an entrepreneurial accountant grow their business. Like, some, I just feel like something very, very special would have happened there. I'm here now, but what I'm saying is that even entrepreneurial type accounting kids, accounting industry people, accounting majors coming out of college, they don't know. Um, they don't know someone like J Mac, right? They don't know the truth of what is being built. They're just kind of, uh, they're still in the old infrastructure of what's being sold, right? And some people might say, oh, well, there's nothing wrong with that. There is something wrong with that. Because when I say in college, me, Juan Garcia now, a few years ago, when I say, well, that's the best opportunity for me. Mm, it was a great opportunity. Like, I don't want to read you anything. But it, I didn't know all the, nearly all the options. Well, it's not so here's here's the paradox in my opinion right because you're right but in a way you're wrong too and and the reason why that oh we're wrong right because it's not as sexy enough right we've kind of talked about that stuff at nauseum but in the same sense you still need that big corporate experience you know it's like calluses that you need to develop because without my experience over the 13 years in in, in public I couldn't possibly be where I am today without all the mentors and, and, and all the people that I worked under. Like you build yeah. things over time, you pick the pieces that you like and then you become on your own. So for me, it's like, that's the scary thing too. Like, I don't know what the answer is. I don't know how you fill yeah. that gap, but you have to, like I see a lot of entrepreneurs here on Long Island that are in their 20s and they think they're entrepreneurs and they're yeah. entrepreneurs. I mean, that's what they are. They're I entrepreneurs. They ancestralize in this little circle and, and they all kind of like feed each other business, but none mm -hmm. of them have calluses. None of them really knows what it's like to miss a deadline and lose a client and like, mm -hmm. you know, go over budget and have to deal with corporate and just all this other mm -hmm. shit that you, the penalties, interest, like mm -hmm. clients screaming and yelling at you because you got the, you know, like they don't yeah. have any of that. How do yeah, you get yeah. that? I don't know. You need it. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So like, there's gotta be some kind of in between, but in the same sense, the time to you said, like what you said, who's excited to go into accounting? Right. Like wh who's getting excited about it? Nobody like why? Right, and then right. you're going to go and like, you know, your experience, the first 
one, two, three years at, you know, big four or, you know, middle market, whatever you decide to do. Um, it's going to be great. But then after a while, you're going to have responsibility and you're going to have to start getting promoted and making more money. And then they, things mm -hmm. change. Um, and I don't know what the, I don't know what the sustainable answer is on that, but I do know that as you correctly said, the young, the new generation coming in, they're not excited about it. Mm -hmm. I see a tremendous amount of opportunity in the accounting bookkeeping world that should get people excited at least about being an entrepreneur. Like, look, with all due respect to the big four, use them as a freaking stepping stone. Go in knowing sure. you're going to be a turn and burn four years, mm -hmm. put it in, get the stuff you need and get yourself out. Like you talk about window of opportunity all the time, right? Like this is you, this is one of your things. And I know like right. Let's do it. Let's that's do a window it. of opportunity right then and there knowing mm -hmm that you are going to get into accounting. Want to get excited about accounting? Get into accounting. Go get recruited by a top firm. It's going to be like getting recruited for a university as a star athlete in high school. Like right. that's what it's going to feel like because that's what that's these what big four firms and these other big firms are going to do. Then they're going to throw lunches and parties and then they're going to kiss your ass for two years. It's going to feel great. And the whole time, what are you doing? Learning. Sponge. Mm -hmm. Preparing mm -hmm. for your next move, right? Finding mm -hmm. the opportunities. And then one or two things are going to happen. You're either going to mm -hmm. go out and be prepared or you actually might stay. Like mm -hmm. that's possible too, right? I mean, you might love what you do mm -hmm. and you might want to stay. I doubt it, but you mm -hmm. never know. And uh, that's what I would be saying to the young people too. Like you want to get excited about it. Don't go to this one firm thinking that's where you're going to work forever. Yeah. Go to that firm with the expectation that you're going to leave because <laughs> you probably are. So go learn as much as you can. And then if you decide to stay, well, I think that's a pretty special thing and you're very fortunate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I agree. Like it's so hard to pinpoint the right thing. Right. And I'm not saying I would have chose a smaller office. Maybe I would have still went with PwC. Right. It's just like what I'm, what I'm trying to say from like my viewpoint, like just coming up what I was looking at in the industry, being very analytical of what I was accepting, saying, as soon as I got my Houston offer to audit oil and gas, I declined it. And I said, no, I want to wake up and do what I love every day, which is tech stuff. So at the very least, if I want to do accounting, let me at least do it in the tech space. So no, guess what? I enjoyed the internship. I want to be with PricewaterhouseCoopers, but I want to work in tech. So can I make a request to San Jose? And that's kind of how my offer meeting went. And like, they, uh, I, I didn't know they were going to accept it. Like it took months for them to accept it. But when they did accept it, I read the email and I grabbed my chair. I was in college and I threw it across a room and it actually broke my window. And it was well worth it. It was well worth it. Because that, that one thing, like me just getting what I want, like that changes everything. So people have to have options or know what they want. Or well, even if they, someone in the firm tells them that, well, that's not an option. Because once I brought that up to the people within the firm, they were like, no, don't ask. Don't do that. Wait two years and then go. Right? Everyone, almost everyone told me that. Almost no one told me, yeah, suggest that. Right? Suggest that you should make that move. They said, no, well, wait for a minute two years and then move. It'll be easier to move. So they didn't want me to ask like crazy. Well, but that was um, going to be my question, right? What right. did you do in that situation that 99.9% .9 of the people don't do? Well, I said exactly what I wanted, even you when the partner came back at me. Yes. Yeah. Even when the partner came back at me and said, well, we have this other girl over here and she's moving to this state and she's moving because she's married and her, her husband is in the military. So she has a real reason to move you would not believe it. That's what the partner told me. She has a real reason to move. And I looked him dead in the eye and you know how I talk, like no one can just tell me stuff. Um, I said, well, my reason is a real reason too. I want to wake up and do what I love to do every day. And I just stayed quiet. And then like he fumbled around. He understood after that. Right. So, um, anyway, mousetrap. Oh, mousetrap. <laughs> hey, that's the new Any accounting term. Anyway, and look, I don't think it's even like people just coming up in accounting. It's actually across the whole industry, like partners not being able to get paid from their clients. So then they can't do payroll for their firm or they like it's it's very it's a very interesting industry. Anyway, J Mac. OK, <laughs> tell us what exactly what you're seeing in the accounting market and then what you're looking forward to going into 2019. And then like how you see everything going past that, basically, which is like 
my client, we were both talking. Like, it's the same thing a lot of my, all my clients realize because all my clients are competent. Like, there's an accounting talent bubble based on much more unqualified candidates and preparers than there are qualified, right? <laughs> so that's what, it seems to be the consensus among the most competent, so. Coast to coast. I, yeah, yeah, coast to really coast. is. Coast to coast. It's actually north global. To, north to south. It's yeah. worldwide. North to south. Oh, man. It is, dude, it is. Like one of the articles I wrote and I published on LinkedIn, I got somebody from Brazil comment on it and saying mm. the same stuff's happening in Brazil. And mm. you asked me the direct question. And honestly, the, the thing that excites me most about it's the bookkeeping, man. It's the accounting. It's the yeah. opportunity to restart the entire game of what the accounting industry has been built on and it's the debits and credits and general ledger maintenance and chart of account organization and it's called bookkeeping accounting whatever you want to call it bookkeeping is what we call it today mm -hmm. the bad thing and i don't really know what the answer is one and mm -hmm. i just see a lot of people stuck uh, I see a lot of people stuck at, 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 at the firms i see a lot of people pretty much they're they're pot committed and where are they going to go um you know people aren't if you're not bringing in business and you're a partner, where are you going to go, right? Because the technical expertise is becoming a lot more easily accessible <laughs> than, you know, and, and, and out in the world. I mean, there's just more and more content being created every single day. And, yeah. and having that knowledge as, as brain candy is, is great, but, you know, the candy store is open 24-7 now, guys. I mean, it's not really that special okay. anymore. And... And, and I feel I, I, some of these guys yeah. are friends, man. Some of these guys I know and like, and I got lucky, like, honestly, like, I mean, I got lucky. Don't, yeah. don't think for one second. And, and, and my story is a lot different and my story will come out another day, but mm -hmm. I got lucky and I just took, and I, I, I and it's not that you get lucky. I guess really that's not the right word. It's like you work your entire life and you do all the things you need to do. So this way, when opportunity presents itself, you're ready to attack. And mm -hmm. I guess that's really more or less what it was. You know, the opportunity came up. Didn't wuss out. Like, I just, you know what? Fuck it, man. Like, let's just do it. And mm -hmm. I haven't looked back. And I don't think there's a lot of people that are in industry and mid sized big counting firms, whether they're managers on partnership track or senior managers in the same, or even just, you know, in an academy or some kind of program or something that, you know, some kind of, you know, leadership program that you're trying to develop. And I've, it's a carrot, guys. It's a carrot. Um, and I'm mm -hmm. sorry to say this, but it is. And even if you take that carrot and you are now in the circle, you're not like, you're right. just not because there's things going on behind the scenes that I know about, like shit that I see. You don't know why I see it? Cause I'm competing against all of you right now. Like I'm seeing what's going on and I have people that are like, you know, and like we're, you're in Cali, I'm in New York, right? We talk a lot. Like, and we know a lot of the same people and mm -hmm. that it's sucks. Garbage. Like, I don't know what the answer is. Um, you it's know, garbage. what I, say is if you're in that position i think what you said earlier juan is a great example right that's a great lesson right if you are in that position mm -hmm. i think you go back you rewind however you're going to cut this up right um mm -hmm. and you and you watch and you listen to what juan said before he had a goal in mind he has an expectation of what he wants his life to look like he is a 20 year old shithead and he doesn't know anything but he's still not afraid to ask for what he wants mm -hmm. and he says it and they they don't even say yes right away. The reason why it took so long is because they're talking about it internally, right? I mean, this is something like, who the fuck mm. is this guy, right? And mm. they're like, okay, you know, and they gave it to you and you still, it wasn't what you wanted, right? Because mm. otherwise you would have still been there, right? I mean, you still thought you right, had right. it, it still wasn't what I you thought. wanted. So think about that for a second. All the work mm. and effort you put in to try to get that, you got it and it still mm. wasn't what you wanted. It's just still not good enough. Still not it's good still enough. Not good enough. And is that good, not good enough for you it's or great. is that not good enough because – they didn't give you what they wanted or did yeah. they just give you a carrot you bit? And so, I mean, look, I, it's mm -hmm. not really an answer to your question. I don't know what the answer is. I guess the only thing I can hope is that more and more people kind of stop drinking the Kool-Aid and start waking up and start taking control mm -hmm. of their lives and stop believing a fucking management committee that can literally mm -hmm. give two shits about you. And I'm sorry to management committees and all the people that know mm -hmm. me, I'm sorry, but to be perfectly mm -hmm. honest, you guys are looking out for yourselves too nobody's a firm first anymore. It's just, it doesn't work that way anymore. And I wish it did because I think it would be a lot better of a profession, but you know it, the profession's not very well respected. Um, right. It's just not, not at all. Not at anything all. Anything I'm going to say that's controversial. Well, fuck it. I don't give a shit. 
not one bit. It's not respected what? one bit. It's and not respected. If, if it's you, just if, not. And this is say, why. If you say that it is respected or it, it is not respected on stage at an accounting conference, like I'm going to do many, many times, um, everyone's going to look at around at each other and say, what? Are you kidding me? Like, we respect each other. Yeah, but it's accountants, not the rest of the world, mm -hmm. let alone the rest of the business world, who very experienced, very valuable partners can't even get big corporate cl clients to pay. It's such a great value. point you just made there, okay. too. I have to cut you because I want to at least just comment on it quickly. That's exactly what it was like in the industry. It was, that's what it felt like, right? Like, yes, we all support each other, and we're mm -hmm. all like, but – we're in this office and the whole world just thinks we're some kind of, you know, cost center and they're just going to, you know, bounce our proposals off each other until we cut each other's throats just to get business and invest our time into the longevity right. of the client so they can go public and, you know, be involved with our network of relationships. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. That wouldn't be gone three years once you raise the fee and they're going to go to the other firm and they're just going to puddle jump until they get what they want. Um, yeah. That's what happens. Yeah. It's just I mean, what happens. But I miss that, you know, like, and, and um, yeah, anyway. Yeah, I mean, I would say that no one really is going to enjoy a lot of what I have to say, but it's not for you to enjoy. It's for the industry to get better, okay? And so the, the ones that will understand that will be the ones that already know how much the industry is hurting, right? So, I mean, me, me as a business person, I'm – there's, there's a lot of things like we can't say about the firms that we worked at and the stuff, the things that we saw. Right. But at the same time, I don't want to discount PwC because they didn't wave a carrot in front of my face. How you're saying it's just that when I got there and I did put in the work, like, and I put in serious work, two busy seasons, right. When I got to the firm, like incredible, an incredible amount of work for me to compete with, um, head down, super technical, um, other associate who is also trying to look good, right? And then me, me competing against them when I didn't become uh, a CPA, right? When I didn't take, when I wasn't just acing every accounting test, every accounting exam, right? I put in a lot of work to work there, but I told PwC from the beginning, I'm a business person before I'm an accountant. And I think that's what you need. And the partner smiled and said, exactly. But then when I went to Silicon Valley and I realized, like, I, I realized this is just the way it is for these big companies. It was so hard. It was incredibly hard to push what I saw in the business environment where we needed to go where to where I was on the line with lead audit partners, right? Telling them what to do. At, from a business perspective, not from a, I'm so experienced in accounting, right? But just like a non more entrepreneurial business perspective. And they give me BS uh, reasons based around um, just like one liners that are not backed on actual reports or numbers or business, which is what accountants should really look at and analyze. And um, I mean, I'm not going to grill PwC alone. It's just the, the simple fact that it's hard for someone like me to go inside of a big entity and then try to steer the ship. So that's what, that's what wasn't enough for me. That they that's not enough for anybody because we all want yeah. to make an impact. It's bullshit. Like that's not acceptable. Yeah. Sorry. Because every single person wants to make an impact. Even if you're going to be a grain of salt on the beach, we all mm. have to care about each other to the point that we need to fulfill each other's needs. I mean, if you're going to hire somebody, that's an important part of your organization and you need to treat that person like a family member. Everybody yeah. talks family, fam bullshit, family, mm -hmm. please. Family's just going to throw somebody out right after tax season and not tell them about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That great family. Thanks a lot guys. Right. Like, yeah, yeah come on. I know what happens. I mean, to I, mean I, I got to jump. Um, go. and I know yeah. this is going to be quick and obviously this is getting serious. This is getting serious. This is getting heated. You should leave. <laughs> But you should I got, leave, right? It explodes. <laughs> I got one more. Okay. Okay. And I want to leave with, gotta go. and we can talk about this and maybe I'll even write an article about this as I'm thinking about it. Cause I only just thought about it now. So I want to like dump it before I forget. Okay. What you're saying reminds me of a situation at one of the last firms I was at. And again, I don't want to name anything and you're right. Like it's really important to understand. We're not shitting on anybody. It's just, exactly. there's, there's things to be discussed and said and, and yeah. come together. Pause. Yeah, pause. I'm not some, just some 
dipshit asking, oh, fly me here to this part of the country. No, I put in the work to even ask that question in my mind, saying that I'm gonna hustle, like do all this during my internship so that I'm one of the best, so that I can even have a little bit of merit to ask that question, right? Or like do other things. You gotta be good to ask for what you want. And accounting is the language of business, right? That's what it is. If we're evolving as a society and as a human race, that shit should be locked down. So maybe potentially this is um, our accounting crap industry that we have going on is just um, a, a, a delaying innovation potentially, right? I mean, if there's so much in, you know, inefficiencies and crap going on in the accounting, I mean, maybe that's a topic for another day. It definitely is, yeah, yeah. But I'm sure. But this does remind me of one thing and I just want to go back for a second. And you're right, like Paul is like, not shitting. It's just experience, what I felt, how I feel about it today, how I know others feel about it, and that things need to be done about it, period, end of story. Like, just talk about it. Let's figure this shit out. Everyone can come. Let's figure it out. I was at that firm, and the cannabis industry started to, you know, buzz was around. I mean, all the good money, easy money has been made, right? It's got, it's got too much legs now. The cannabis industry was, it's got to add some steam. There was opportunity still to get involved. That's a forward thinking thing, right? Like a forward thing, you know, here we are, 2014, whatever it is, have an opportunity to get involved with an industry that's controversial, yeah, but whatever. How many accounting firms dove in? I know the one I was at, not only did they not dive in, they actually specifically sent out a memo and a whole thing saying, we will not be doing this, we're not doing anything with this, there's too much rules, this, that, and the other. came from tax and compliance and all this crap. Mm -hmm. Cannabis industry is not even on the table to be discussed. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to now, today, which is just a few, maybe probably, yeah, so 15, 16, 2015, mm -hmm. 16, a few years mm -hmm. later. That mm -hmm. firm is hosting seminars and webinars on the cannabis industry, and they're having these events, and they're getting sponsored, and it's like, what? Like, that, that's, that's not, not just, even a pivot. That's by, just by like, way, oh, people are going there. Let's. No, 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 no. I just want to get everybody straight. By the way, that's not just accounting firms. That's Mark Cuban, okay? That's Mark Cuban poo-pooing Bitcoin but he's gonna you know champion it years later right or someone hiding hey the kids yeah the, ki the kids have seen these people on tv right they kind of like they tried to push their 2018 beliefs with not bringing up oh i said this back then which is um i i love to document share our thoughts because life is long life is long so there's moments so in time there's moments in time and uh, there's people that don't have to disappear from social media when they tell the truth, right? So I, well, that's, that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm going to end with. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what I'm going to end with. And uh, by the way, if, if you feel like you can't, uh, one thing that Justin said that stood out that maybe I want to talk about another time is stuck, right? I don't know the feeling of stuck because when I was stuck with not being able to drive my agenda in tech big four land saying we should attack here and we should attack there, then I just quit and like did something that to where I could take advantage of what I saw, right? Not everyone is, can do that. And I wouldn't have been able, I, I wouldn't have been, been able to quit and then start a firm. Like I wouldn't have been able to quit and start a firm. I, I'm totally different than a lot of people out there. But um, a lot of people out there, there's definitely more options than you probably think. So look deep into what Justin is doing. I'll tag his stuff below. But that's it for today, guys. That's it for today. You've got options. Thank you, J-Mac, for speaking on the future of accounting. And that is it. Hey guys, so today on CPA Primetime, we bought, <laughs> we bought, <laughs> this will be on the outtake, <laughs> we bought him, <laughs> he says whatever we want, <laughs> I'm giving you CPR, <laughs> there you go, an additional episode, first one to do two episodes, because you told me that you're going to be the most viewed episode, and organically, you were, on the video version, it's going to be out so for a long time, yeah, yeah, there you go. Right? You told me that. You taught me that. You said there you that go. Today. It's out there forever. So we'll there talk you soon. Thank you.
Let me run. All right. Thanks, bro. All right. Adios. Have a great night.